Well, you've got the business jet, I've got the tornado. Where's Hammond and the Messerschmitt? You did say 10 a.m., didn't you? Yeah. Where the hell is he, then? Eventually, he stopped fooling around on the Welsh mountain roads and joined us at one of the most remarkable places in the British Isles. Pendine Sands. So here we are, all three cars together on this enormous playground. And now we must decide which is best. All we learn to begin with is just how hard it is to drive a powerful rear-drive car on wet sand. They just go sideways, constantly. After many hours of arduous fun, I mean practice, we worked out that the Jag and the Porsche were a riot. And the BMW, well, that was a bit like watching your dad trying to dance. Strith, I'm giving this up. This is lethal. It's not bad, but it simply doesn't have the exuberance of the Jaguar or the poise of the Porsche. However, maybe things would be different in a straight-line drag race. This will be a drag race with a difference because there's so little traction on the beach that there's every chance you can spin in a straight line. I'm fairly sure one of us, maybe all of us, will cross the line either backwards or upside down. And we're off. The rear engine in the Porsche meant it had better traction off the line, but the sheer power of the Jag meant it couldn't pull out much of a lead. That Porsche is completely planted. The car moves around a lot as you accelerate. And the BMW? That was nowhere. Come on, car! Go in a straight line! It isn't so much a test of how fast the car goes, but how able you are to hold it in a straight line on what feels more like sheet ice. You feel it snatching and grabbing as it gets grip and then loses it. Jag is in the lead! <laughs> Let's not forget, though, that the BMW is the most spacious car here, with the largest rear seats and the biggest boot. It's also the cheapest by £6,000, and it will look good in the pringleized world of your local golf club. Here, though, at Britain's birthplace of speed, it is completely outclassed. To find out if my colleagues shared this view, we peeled off for a cup of tea. So, chaps, if it were your money, you had to go out tomorrow and buy one of those cars, big two-door coupe, a lot of money, what's it going to be? For its drive, and it is so far ahead of the Jaguar as a drive, I'd have to have the 911. I mean, I'm not really a 911 sort of person, but I get in that car and I drive away and I think, wow, this is really special. But I'd have the Jack. It's a huge car. You're, you're sitting in a tiny cabin. You're using an immense amount of fuel, but it's sort of, it's all yours. Now, I'll tell it's you the fantastic. moment, the, the, the worry for me would be, if you bought the 911, at some point, you are going to be on a country road, enjoying that brilliant drive. You're going to look in your mirror and you're going to see one of those Jags and think, Oh, I bought the wrong one. For that tell, one. Tell you what I think is interesting here. We haven't discussed the, the, the BMW. Well, it's boring. It's like Munich, actually. <laughs> but it is. If you think about it, you go to Munich, you get a fantastic hotel, the place looks great, it's clean and tidy, the services are good, the food's great, the lot of it. You come home and you never think, 
Wish I was still in Munich. It just leaves you feeling completely cold. There's it's no boring. magic in it. Yeah. Boring. And completely boring. So that's gone. Jack, you'd, have jack. Yeah. you'd have the Jag. I'd have the Jag. 9-11. You'd have the 9-11. So go on, casting vote. Go on. You've got I don't to spend, know, honestly, you've got to spend money on one. Logic dictates I buy the Porsche. It does. But I wouldn't. You'd go for the Jag. I think I've just, I've just made my mind I'd have the Jag. I can totally see why. I really can. But it I'd is magnificent. It's a majority verdict. Yeah. And uh, and it's the Jag. I wish it had more space. I wish it had a limited slip differential. I wish all the buttons made sense. But you would never tire ever of the way it goes from 80, 90, 100, 110. It's just like you've got this huge supercharger with a small V8 shoved on the back as a sort of afterthought. That's what it's all about, really, with cars like this. Excitement. And it's excitement that the Jag delivers in spades. I would just like to say, if I may, at this point, that the BMW arrived here this morning, the Stig took it out, and it set a blistering time, 1 minute 28 point something. So on the track, at least, it is very, very fast, this. But it is still kind of cold and clinical. And it is riddled with faults. The seats are very uncomfortable, the driving position's rubbish, the satellite navigation's useless. If you go for a manual gearbox, the clutch is completely unmanageable, even worse than it is in the Z4. The ride is appalling. And I think I know why it costs £6,000 less than the Jaguar and the Porsche. You know the designer of the 5 Series died after he'd finished it? He did. <laughs> this one died while he was doing it. <laughs> Only half of it styled. Look, I'll show you. He's cutting along here, perfectly well, nice straight line. Got to here and lost the will to live. Look. <sighs> and then someone else came along and just sort of plonked a big duvet on the back. <laughs> But at least it didn't manage to spoil our day. Because, well, when you said we were going to drive all the way out to that beach at the end of Wales, which is 5,000 miles away or whatever Yeah, it Nevada would have been more convenient, for sure. I thought you were mad at first, but when we got there, what a place and what a day. It was such a lot of fun.